today is lecture 23. It is the second to last lecture uh, in this course. And we're going to be covering arbitration expressions. So we take our existing composition operators of sequential and parallel, and we bring them into this non-deterministic domain. Previously, we covered the uh, tree arbiter, and it has the, the following CHP, right? Uh, this channel S either goes up the tree to another one of these processes, or it goes out to some shared resource that is handing out grants uh, for access to it. So wait for the uh, probe on A, basically wait for a token to arrive on A, uh, and wait for a token to arrive on B. And whichever one arrives first, then we uh, send a request to the root node or of the tree arbiter. And once we receive a grant from the shared resource, then we execute the communication action on whichever uh, uh, channel requested that shared resource. Right? And so this is the no slack sequential composition, which means that uh, these two uh, communication actions must start and finish simultaneously. Right, so we wait on uh, probes for A or B, whichever one arrives first, we, we then request a grant and execute that communication action. So today we are extending this uh, description, this specification to add uh, a third case, which is both A and B arrive within uh, a relatively small window of time, right? And that window of time is dictated by how long it takes to uh, request and then receive this grant from S. So basically, if both A and B arrive in a small enough window that S has, we've sent out a request for a grant and then uh, both A and B arrive before we receive that grant, then we do this third action, right? And this third action can either be we execute one and then the other, right? This is called a greedy arbiter. Uh, or it can be we execute both in parallel. And this is called a bundling merge. OK, so how do we build this? Uh, we have, you know, in the last lecture, we described the arbiter. We described the tree arbiter. Uh, and so we need to figure out a way to project the uh, arbiter specifications out of this non-deterministic selection uh, so that we can then implement the rest of the uh, specification using our normal you know, templated synthesis and formal synthesis procedures. So uh, in order to do that, we need to start by pulling this communication action on S out of this selection statement. Now, because this communication action on S is preceded by probes on A and on B, we need to factor out those probes as well, right? We need to, we need to pull out a copy of those probes along with our communication on, action on S. And so when we do that, it looks like this, right? We have, we wait for a probe on either A or B, then we execute the communication action on S uh, with a no slack sequential composition with the entire selection statement, right? Everything in the selection statement. Now, we want to break this three uh, condition selection statement into some set of two condition selection statements so that we can then factor out arbiters, right? Uh, and then implement them, which means that the easiest way to approach that is to add in a vacuous uh, condition, right? Now, we know that because of this probe that or on A or B, that one of those two probes are going to be high. So as soon as we get to the selection statement, it's not going to wait. It's just going to go straight into whichever, whichever condition it's currently in. So if we add this extra condition on the lack of any probe on A or B, right, on no tokens being ready, and we allow it to skip, then we haven't changed the specification in any, in any way because this, uh, this condition won't ever be executed as guaranteed by this, uh, this guard. 
But what that allows us to do is now we can take this entire selection statement, and you'll notice that it it very much looks like uh, two separate selection statements broken broken up, right? So we if there isn't a probe on A, then we skip. If there is, we receive on A. If there isn't a probe on B, then we skip. If there is, we receive on B. And because this final composition is in parallel, we do these two these two actions, these two selection statements in parallel. We're effectively factoring out that four condition selection statement. Um, so our next step is to then take these two selection statements and uh, run process decomposition to pull them out into separate processes, right? Uh, so we're going to introduce a channel, SA and SB, one for each of these to do process decomposition. And those channel actions are going to be executed in parallel here, re replacing uh, our two selection statements and then now we have two new processes uh, where we have SA executed in, in a no slack sequential composition with uh, each selection statement that we had just uh, decomposed out into it, its own process. But we're left with this extra uh, probe on A or B preceding this no slack sequential composition with S, right? Uh, so we need to figure out how to handle that. So if we add a, uh, a variable, right, a single variable in each process, one for A and one for B, which goes up when we're executing the branch on A, we're receiving the token, and goes down when we're done, right, or goes up when we're executing the branch on B, receiving the token, and goes down when we're done, then we can use these new variables as shared variables in our original process. UA and UB, right? So keep in mind that these shared variables, we're not acknowledging them in any way, right? We're not waiting for the downgoing transition on them. We're not, uh, we do send a, a signal back with this communication on SA or SB, but this guard is isochronic. This is the process specification for the maybe execute element. Um, we're going to rename S A to S just for the implementation of this uh, process. So the next step is because this is a negated probe on a channel and an, a token can arrive on that channel at any time, then this probe on A, right? This negated probe on A is unstable. Right, we can start executing this branch, and then the token arrives, and uh, the branch is no longer enabled. So we can replace this negated probe, which we can't implement with an arbiter, uh, with a probe on SA. Given events simultaneously arriving on on the two inputs to the arbiter, it will uh, serve those events equally often. Right, given an infinite amount of time, it's it's weakly fair. And so we can take this no slack sequential uh, composition on SA and on SB and move them into uh, this selection statement. And in doing so, we replace this unstable probe with the probe on S. Uh, and so we've moved this no slack sequential into this uh, selection statement. When we compose it with a skip, it's just the communication action on S. And when we compose it with this sequence, then it's a no slack sequential composition with the receive on A. Now this we can implement with an arbiter, right? So we can expand this out into an HSE and it looks somewhat like this, right? So for this branch where we have a probe on S, then uh, execute a uh, channel action on S, we wait for s.e, we raise s.r, we wait for not s.e, we lower s.r. Now, that is uh, in a non-deterministic selection with a.r, right? So if s.e arrives first, we execute that. 
basically executing the skip condition. And if a.r arrives first, then we raise our uh, shared variable, telling the uh, base process to, to, to start the execution action on S and therefore start the execution action on SA, right? Uh, and then we wait for S.E, right? We wait for the grant. So uh, once we get S.E, we pass that grant on to A by lowering A.E. Uh, and then we wait for A to be done with its access to the shared resource when it lowers A.R. Uh, once it's done, we lower UA right, talking back to uh, our original um, base process. And then we execute the uh, remainder of the communication actions for both A and E in parallel, just to finish everything up. Okay, so we can break this up into pieces, right? This, uh, th these two sequences in red, can be pretty straightforwardly implemented by this um, ideal arbiter, right? So uh, the ideal arbiter will wait for s.e to go high, it'll raise s.r, it'll wait for not s.e, it'll lower s.r. Same thing here, it'll wait for a.r to go high, it'll raise, U dot, it'll raise ua, then it'll wait for not a.r and it'll lower ua. But the other thing that it does is if a.r arrives first, it raises UA, and then S.E arrives. And once we've gone through this process of waiting for S.E and lowering AE, once A.R goes low, right, after, after it's gotten access to the shared resource, it'll lower UA and then jump over into this other branch. Right, it'll it'll immediately start executing on this side of the arbiter, and so it'll by default execute s.r up, not s.e, and s.r down. Right, so that, all that's left now uh, is our uh, is basically passing that grant on to a, and we can do this with a NAND gate. Right, so uh, if we are uh, if we have a grant on s.e and we have locked into this branch where uh, the request on a.r won the non-deterministic selection, then uh, we lower AE. So if s.e and ua, lower AE, and that's an AND gate. And so that's our maybe execute element, right? It's it's a pretty small circuit overall. Uh, we're taking, again, we're taking this ideal arbiter as black box um, and we can box this up. And now we have our input a.r, our output ae, our input grant se, our output request for grant sr, and our uh, signal that, you know, we have a token waiting on a, which is ua. Uh, now that we have this circuit, we can compose it in various different ways, right? Um, if we want to check whether, uh, so if we want to compose this in sequence, then we simply wire up the request on SR, signifying that we're done, right? Uh, and we can pass the grant on to the next, maybe execute element, and wire that up to the next one in the sequence, right? Passing that grant over. If we want to uh, pass the grant over to A and B in parallel, then we take this grant from SE and wire it up to both A and B, right? Uh, and then we take the finished condition from A and B and wire that up to a C element, which we pass back to SR. Right, so this will, this will execute them both in parallel this will execute them in sequence. Okay. What we've implemented then are two, you know, our two circuits. We have our bundling merge, 
right? So we're gonna, we're gonna take all of this kind of extra circuitry uh, telling us about the maybe execute element, and we're gonna put some syntactic sugar on it to make it a little easier to read, right? So if if the uh, maybe execute element on A is ready, right? If there's a token waiting on A or there's a token waiting on B, then we try to execute A in parallel with trying to execute B, right? And the final circuit, uh, we take our sequent, we take our parallel composition for the bundling merge. We now when when s dot e is high in the bundling merge, that signifies a grant. But when it's coming in from our shared resource, s dot e being low signifies a grant. So we need to throw an inverter on here. And when s dot r is high in our parallel uh, composition here, that signal signifies that it's done. But when s dot e is high here, it's requesting a grant, right? It's signifying that it's ready. So when, when this is not done, right, it's ready, and we have an event waiting on A, or we have an event waiting on B, right, handled by this asymmetric C element, then we make a request for a grant. The grant comes in with S study being lowered, that raises the grant here, executing A and B in parallel, or trying to. And then that raises S dot R here, which lowers the input to this C element, and uh, lowers this output request. Uh, and the greedy arbiter looks identical, except that the composition here is sequence rather than parallel. Now, there are a whole bunch of peephole optimizations that you can run on this to simplify the circuit, right? Effectively taking this C element and merging it into the this inverter and this C element. Uh, and, you know, those speed things up a bit, but as far as the base implementation goes, uh, this is pretty easy to remember. Say you have a shared resource and you want to mitigate access to the shared resource. That could be some communication bus, it could be a memory, uh, and you have some kind of read-write interface to that, right? Uh, and you want to uh, share that read-write interface across to multiple uh, communicating processes, right? Then you might want to put, say, a greedy arbiter there, or a tree of greedy arbiters there, right, to do that. Uh, if there are multiple uh, possible interfaces to that memory, then you'll want to use a more complex expression in, in that arbiter, right? If we go back to here, this composition can be any number of communication actions on any number of channels, right? And it can be uh, a sequence, parallel, you can, uh, whatever composition you can write here, you can build. And so basically, as this these interfaces to this shared memory or shared uh, resource become more complicated, you'll just get more complicated expressions in that, um, in that composition. So maybe we want to bundle simultaneous read requests, uh, or maybe we have um, a program counter, we have an instruction fetch unit, uh, and maybe we want to add interrupts. How do we know that uh, there's an interrupt on this channel? We have to try to execute or receive on that channel. We would uh, we would get get through this loop, uh, execute you know try to execute either the program counter or the program interrupt, whichever one comes first. We execute that one, uh, and then we go on to execute the 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 other one, right? The program counter, or the program interrupt. And if you get multiple interrupts, then maybe you want to compose all of those in sequence, right? Or if they don't affect each other, maybe you want to bundle multiple interrupts together. Right? Uh, say you have a, uh, a pipeline, and you want to know whether or not this pipeline is empty. Right? 
Uh, can I maybe power gate the whole pipeline? Can I turn off the pipeline to, to save energy because it's not being used? Uh, then maybe we have a power controller, right? And we have some kind of control on the input and output of this, um, of this pipeline. And on the input, we send an increment command to the counter. On the, out, on the output of the pipeline, we send a decrement command to the counter. And when the counter signals empty, then we turn off power, right? But these increment and decrement commands can arrive at any time. And maybe we want to bundle them together and not send a command to the counter if they arrive at the same time, right? And so we can do that now with a, a bundling merge. There are a wide variety of places in which you can use these uh, compositions. Uh, and we'll present another one on Wednesday with stoppable clocks. Uh, and it's exactly this same kind of problem. Uh, we have three examples. So if we took, take a look at example one, uh, we are implementing the maybe execute element. Uh, the uh, process definition for the maybe execute element can be found in sync.act. We have a pre-implemented uh, arbiter, ideal arbiter here, which maintains uh, exclusive high. Now it's it's got a templated interface, right, with a reset input and a size input. Um, if we go back, if we go down to the maybe execute process definition in sync.act, uh, you'll find instructions here. Right? So our goal is to implement the maybe execute element using an ideal arbiter. Uh, we have possible values for reset, right? Reset underscore x will not reset the outputs of the arbiter. Reset underscore zero will reset the two outputs low. And reset underscore one will reset the two outputs high. Uh, and for the sz input, just use six. All right, so let's take a look at e1.act uh, and open up sync.act. And let's implement our uh, maybe execute element. Uh, and so the first thing that we need to do is pull in our ideal arbiter. Uh, I'm going to reset both the output lines low. And I'm going to size it six. I'm going to call it arb. Uh, and then it's going to have g and then some set of inputs. Uh, the first input, if we look at our implementation, is s dot e, and the second is a dot r. So let's do that. s dot e, a dot r. The first output is s dot r, and the second output is ua. Let's do that. s dot r, ua. That's our, our ideal arbiter. The next step is the NAND gate to pass the um, grant back to A. So D dot G and D. And that's just if we have the grant on S dot E and uh, we've resolved the request on our arbiter uh, through UA, then we lower A dot E, giving it the grant. If we don't have a grant on S dot E, or we're not in the branch where uh, the request on A won the non-deterministic selection, then we make sure that the uh, the input channel A does not have a grant. So A dot E goes high. OK, that's our maybe execute element. And let's run it and see what happens. So I'm going to say make E1. Sync, let's take a look at sync.ac. Ah, it's exclusive high ideal. I misnamed it. There we go. Make E1. R does not exist. E5. Uh, we need to use D0 because this is an E101 that's templated. All right. Make E1. There we go. OK. Uh, PRSIM E1.PRS. Source e1.rc, cycle, All right? No instabilities, no interference, no errors in general. Uh, let us 
uh, open up the analog simulation to PRSIM in VWS. Source PRSIM.RC. It runs. Now let's take a look at it. So uh, PR view, test.spy.prn. And here is our waveform viewer. We have two inputs. A is going to be in blue. And then S.E is going to be in red. And then we're going to put AE down here along with SR here. <clears throat> and so we can see what's going on. And then we're going to put UA in, in kind of this extra thing on the side. And let's zoom in and see how this is performing. So let's go to the beginning. All right. On reset, we have SE going high and A uh, on, and the request on A going high. Now it looks like uh, AE. So UA did not win the selection, right? Uh, SD did. So let's move SD actually over here and move UA down here and delete this so we can see kind of better which one, which selection statement. All right. So S. R, the request on S, wins the selection statement, right? And so we execute the communication action on S. The communication action on A, which is in blue, doesn't get executed. And so we effectively handle our skip case here, right? And then once the uh, enable on S is lowered, we still have a request on A. Right, so A wins the next one, uh, but then we have to wait for our grant on SE. And so once we receive our grant on SE, A.E goes low. Then we wait for the request on A to go low, right, right here, before that lowers UA. And then doing so raises the enable on A and then allows SE to execute its communication action, right? Returning the grant, right? So uh, SR goes goes high, SE goes low, SR goes low, and the, and the grant is returned. So you can see, effectively, we can try executing, and sometimes we miss, sometimes we hit, uh, and yeah, this is, uh, the execute, maybe execute element. Uh, so the next step is example two. And in example two, we're going to use this maybe execute element to implement the bundling merge. Uh, let's work through this. So uh, we're implementing our bundling merge. Uh, our first thing to do is pull in the maybe execute element. So let's do that. Maybe execute. Uh, and uh, we're going to do two of those, one for A and one for B. So let's call this try A. Uh, and we're going to call this try B, execute try B. Uh, and those both have G. And then let's take a look. Sync. OK, so G and then uh, A, S, and U, A. We're going to need to make a variable for that. B. S U B. We're going to need to make a variable for that. <clears throat> so we have dual U A uh, and U B. Uh, and uh, this is actually going to be S A and S B, right? Because we have two. We go back and look at our uh, slide deck. Right? We have a, this is a bundling merge, so we're implementing this plus this right so step one is s a and s b so let's do that so e1 o1 s a s b and then uh these get triggered in parallel by s.e but that happens through an inverter right so let's uh set s 
b dot um, e equal to s a dot e, and then put in our PRS body. Oops, this should be s b. Press g dot b b g dot g d, and drive s a dot e. S dot e drives S A dot e down, not S dot e drives S A dot e up. So that's our inverter, and it's connected to both, right? S A and S B. Uh, then we need to handle S A R and S B R, right? To drive, uh, to drive this C element, and then uh, drive. We go back to here. These two C elements. Right, so uh, we have S A dot D zero and S B dot D zero, and then on the other side we have not S A dot D zero and not S B dot D zero, right? And those drive some signal. Let's call that uh, underscore um, S A B. Let's actually declare that. Cool. All right, so underscore SAB down, uh, underscore SAB up, and that'll drive some other variable. We'll call that SAB. It's just an inverter for RC element. Okay, so that's uh, that's this box with this inverter. So now we need to invert this before it goes in. Uh, and so that'll be cool underscore. Uh, so we're going to need two. We're going to need a node here. We're going to need a node here. We're going to need a node here. So let's call this, uh, I don't know, uh, SR underscore SR. And then we have S dot D zero. So SAB drives SR down, not SAB drives SR up. Uh, and then SR, so that's, we just went through our inverter here. Now we're driving, now we're building this C element. So it'd be SR and UA or UB drives underscore SR down. SR, uh, not SR drives underscore SR up and that drives S dot D zero. So uh, underscore SR, S dot D zero down. And underscore SR, S dot D zero up. Okay, so that's our bundling merge. There's some optimizations that we can do here. Uh, so we have two inverters here. We have a C element followed by a C element. Right, and then we have this inverter here. Uh, let's get rid of, let's see if we can get rid of some things, right? Uh, so we can move these inverters, right? This one through, go back, through here, right? So. This inverter can be moved through this C element and onto these two wires here, right? So let's do that. Uh, we're gonna build underscore SAR and underscore SBR, and we're gonna pull it from uh, SAR underscore SBR. And then we're going to have SAB after that. So we're going to pull it from uh, SA dot D0. So SA, SB dot D0. And then instead of using the, these here, we can put underscore SAR. And this relationship flips right so this is now SAB right so we've just pushed the SAB inverter through that C element 
uh, into SA and SB, respectively. Uh, now we have uh, this inverter followed by a C element, followed by an inverter, right? And so we can actually get rid of this inverter, merge this C element in to the other one, and get rid of this C element. And now we have SAB and not SAB. So that's just a bit of peephole optimization. Uh, and it cleans up the code a little bit, right? So let us try to execute this. Uh, I think everything, let me see if everything's defined. We don't need SR or underscore SR anymore. We have SAB. All right, SA.E, that's all written. And because we're using uh, reset to zero on the maybe execute element. That means that SA uh, dot D zero and UA are both reset low, which means that this will be reset low, which means this is reset high, which means this is reset low. So we're good on reset. Okay. Right, but and make E2. Uh, and let's run this through PRSIM. So PRSIM E2.PRS, source E2.RC. Let's see if that works. Yep. No instability, no interference. We're good to go. So let's take a look at the analog simulation. We're running the analog simulation. That's probably enough. PR view test.spy up here. Okay. So this is the bundling merge, which means that we want to compare A and uh, B versus S dot. E, I guess, and S dot, um, and the request. And then we will also want to take a look at uh, A, E, and B to see which ones get triggered. Let's zoom in. OK, so we start, and we get requests on both uh, A and B. That triggers a request for a grant. The grant is provided after the request for both A and B go high. And so the enables of both A and B go low simultaneously. Uh, as they we wait for them both to complete before lowering the grant request on S, uh, and then um, we continue on, right? We, we get effectively uh, new requests on A and B. In this case, uh, our request on A arrives long before our request on B. And so we send out a request for a grant uh, as soon as we are allowed to. However, the grant doesn't arrive until the request for B has arrived. And so we still execute both A and B simultaneously. Right? And so let's kind of scoot forward. Here we go. So now we get a request on B, right? Long before our request on A. Uh, our request on B triggers a request out for the grant. We get our grant before we receive the request on A. And so only the enable on B goes low and the enable on A stays high, right? So we only execute the one. Uh, and then the request on A must wait all the way through until uh, the grant is returned, and then we get a new, uh, we are allowed to request a new grant uh, because S.E went high. And so as soon as S.E goes high again, the, the request for the grant goes high, and then both the requests for A, or both the enables for A and B go low. Right? So this is kind of non-deterministically bundling 
uh, requests for grants together and then servicing them out. 